Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Kyle with the Brickto Security, and today we're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the three box. Let's get going. All right, so I already got a box up and running. I'm gonna grab our IP here. I'm gonna do a sudo nmap, put in our IP address and do a dash SV so I can try to guess our version number. I'm gonna let that run, get back in a second. All right, it looks like nmap was able to find two different ports here being SSH and HTTP. Um, ports 22 and port 80. So let's load up Firefox and take a look at this web page and let's see what's on here. So it looks like we have a bands page, gives examples as to who they are, tour dates, and we have a contact us. Um, let's check Wapalizer and see if he was able to find anything. Uh, doesn't say any languages specifically, but we do have this contact page. So it might be fetching something in particular. I'm gonna inspect this right now and see if we see anything. And right away, you can see right here on the form action, we have a .php. So we know that there's probably gonna be a PHP extension page of some kind, just because it's gonna have to actually fetch that on the contact form. So why don't we go ahead and take a look to see if we can find anything extra. I also noticed that in the email right here, it has the the toppers dot hack the box for a domain. So what we can actually do is similar to what we did in a previous video, which would resolve our specific IP address to recognize that domain. And you can take a look to see how we did that in the responder box by clicking on the link right here. So what I'm gonna do is hop back into our terminal and I'm gonna do echo, put in quotations, our IP address, and then have it resolve the DNS with a specific host name being uh, the toppers dot hack the box as that was the domain that we saw previously i'm going to pipe this so we're going to add an additional man to this and i'm going to do t which is going to write to a specific file dash a is going to append it so we're not going to write over the entire file but rather just add to the end of it i'm going to add that to slash etsy slash hosts permission denied let's go ahead and run that as sudo let's add that to our second statement okay so uh make sure you add sudo i believe it's just to the t statement um, but that'll allow you to have permission to be able to write into that slash etsy slash host and we can see right here at the bottom that we did uh, echo out this command now that's going to appear at the bottom of our etsy slash host if we do slash etsy slash host and tail that we can see right here at the bottom we have our ip address and it's resolving to the DNS host name of the toppers dot hack the box. So what I'm gonna look for now is something called a subdomain. So what a subdomain is, is we can use something like hackthebox.com as our example. Well, there may also be something that goes before hack the box being like ctf.hackthebox.com, or maybe it'll be info.hackthebox.com. Those appendages prior to what the top level domain is, is your subdomain. So we can actually use something like GoBuster to go ahead and enumerate and see if we can find any other subdomains in our virtual hosts. Now I'm gonna assume you already have Seclis installed. If you don't have that installed, take a look at the description. I'll have that link in there for you to the GitHub page. There's a simple command you can do if you are running Kali to have that actually added directly into Kali. But we're gonna use GoBuster to do this enumeration. So I'm gonna type in GoBuster vhost dash w. And now we're gonna find our word list. So user share word list, stack list, discovery, DNS, subdomains, top 1 million, and we are going to do the uh, 5,000 uh, just to start with to see if we can find anything. Then we need to specify the URL with the dash U, and we have specified our URL as the toppers, dot hack the box when we add that to our slash etsy slash hosts so i'm going to run this and let's see what we find so looks like we got a whole bunch of nothing here um you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add one more flag here and i'm gonna add dash dash and dash domain and all that's going to do is actually append the main domain with just words to our word list I'm gonna let that run again and see what we find now. All right, so it looks like if we have found s3.dot 
the toppers dot hack the box now what s3 is is amazon's simple storage service and what people are allowed to do here is save whatever they would like to into the cloud provided from amazon's aws so what we can do now is actually append our host name again and actually add the s3 bucket as our domain host so i'm going to press up here a couple times until we get to the top and instead of it being our IP address with the toppers dot hack the box, I'm going to do S3 dot the toppers dot hack the box. Press enter on that. What I'm going to do now is actually grab our web address right here and I'm going to add that and it should resolve. So now we can see that we have a status running for the S3 bucket on the toppers dot hack the box. Now, depending on the configuration that is set for AWS, we might be able to actually interact with it using something called AWS CLI or AWS command line interface. Press enter and see if it finds it. So we don't actually have it. So I can do sudo apt install AWS CLI. Let that install real quick for us. And now the next thing that we're gonna to need to type here is AWS configure. This is going to ask us for these individual options for us to specifically have access into this S3 bucket. Well, we might not actually have any configurations that need to be set if there's a specific security group that allows something like a guest or anonymous user into that bucket. And one of the names that we can use to resolve is actually temp. So I'm going to use temp. 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 Okay, third time's a charm. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to run here is going to be AWS dash dash endpoint. And we're going to have this equal the web address being HTTP colon slash slash S3 dot the toppers dot hack the box. And now we need to specify what this is, and it is an S3 bucket. And then you're going to enter a command that we would use normally on something like a Linux box. So we can do LS, and this should list out all the different buckets that are available. And as you can see from the interface, we do actually have access into the toppers .hack the box. So let's continue out this command and go specifically into that box. So we're gonna list out everything into the box of the toppers .hack the box. Press center on that. And we can go further and see two different images that are available being .ht access and index.php. So we can see that we have read privileges, but let's say if we can actually write anything into that bucket. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a simple script. I'm just gonna call it shell.php because we know that it accepts PHP scripts based off what it was doing from the contact form. So let's create this real quick. First thing we need to do is specify that this is a PHP file. So I'm gonna type in bracket, question mark, PHP. And the next thing we're gonna add is system. And what system is going to do is actually specify whatever our parameter is. And this time specifically, it's gonna be within the URL. So what I'm gonna do is have system actually get a file. So I'm gonna do a dollar sign, all caps of get. Then let's add another bracket. And we're gonna have it do a specific command of some kind. Then we're gonna close off that bracket. In that statement and you end with a question mark and a bracket to close it all off. So I'm going to save that for us. Instead of having it list out what these uh, buckets are, I'm going to see if it will actually copy our shell.php into that specific address being s3 slash slash the toppers dot hack the box. I'm going to press enter on this. And it does look like we have upload available. If we want to go check to see if it's actually there, we can see when we read the file again that we have uploaded the shell.php and there is some code into it. So we did have write access into the S3 bucket. All right, so let's load up Firefox here again. And instead of it having it look for the S3 bucket, how about we have it load our shell.php? Now, if we remember from our code, we are actually able to execute a specific command. So if we put question mark and command, now we need to give it an exact command. So how about we give it something like ID just so we can see if I can identify the machine that we're using. Press enter on that and we see that it was able to actually go grab 
our UID being the www-data. All right, so the thing that we're going to do next is write a reverse shell to our Linux attack box. So let's go back into our terminal and bring that up to the top and I'm going to do vim and I'm going to uh, call this shell.sh. I'm going to write here. Uh, I need to go ahead and grab our IP address to our tunnel that it's reaching back to hack the box. So here's that IP address. I'm going to copy that over. Now for our basic reverse shell script, we're going to write this back into Linux. So to write back to our box, I'm going to do pound exclamation point slash bin slash bash. And that's going to call back to a Linux machine. And so this is a bash command that we are running. And we're going to do dash I. You want to have this call to an and sign because we're going to run an additional comment to this. And we're going to have this send to slash dev slash TCP because we want this to call back to a web page and add a slash, put in our IP address that addresses our tunnel. And then we need to specify a specific port. So do one more slash and I'm going to do port 1337. And the last thing that we need to add is a uh, standard end script being zero to the brackets and one. All right, that looks good. Let me go ahead and close that. All right, so now that we've created that, we can take a look and we can see that within this directory here, we have the shell.sh for what we just created. Let me exit out of ifconfig, get a whole screen for you again. Now I'm gonna start a netcat listener. Now what netcat is, is just a utility tool to allow read write on different TCP and UDP connections on the network. And if you recall from the script that we just wrote, we used, uh, port 1337. So I'm going to do netcat dash NLVP. Now I'm not going to go over what each of those are, but the P stands for just port. So we need to specify a specific port being 1337. And so now we are listening here on port 1337. It's listening on any and all networks for 1337. And I'm going to open up another tab here. And what else we need to do is if you recall within this directory that we are in, we have this specified script. Well, we need to allow the website to actually call back to us from our directory in order to get the reverse shell. So I'm going to do Python three dash M and I'm going to start an HTTP oops, dash M and I'm going to start an HTTP dot server. So now whenever we go and have the URL request something from us, it'll request specifically back to our directory here. So let's go back into Firefox. And so we need to enter our specified command. So instead of having it recognize ID, let's have it curl or client URL back into requesting from our tunnel IP address, the reverse shell. So our command is going to be curl. And now because we are needing to URL encode this, we need to space this out. To space out, we need to do percent sign 20, and that's the URL encoding for space. And now let's have it request back into our reverse shell. So here's our tunnel network address, and let's have it call back to our HTTP server that we set up at port 8000. And now we need to specify the file name that we created being shell.sh. And the last thing that we're gonna do is have it specify the type of command that it's going to be, which we're going to try to open this in bash. Now, hopefully when I press enter here, it's going to request back to our directory for our reverse shell. Press enter on that, go back into our terminal. We can see that we had a request and it actually would get the slash shell dot sh. And over on this tab, you can see that we are now www dash data on the three box. And so if I type LS, we can see the different images that we have within the directory. And we are now inside of this S3 directory. So I can uh, move around. Let's go find this specific flag. Let's do CD dot dot slash dot dot slash. And let's see what's in this. And let's CD dot dot slash one more time. And now we need to go find the flag. Let's CD into var. And let's cd into www. And we can see that we have our flag. So let's cat out our flag.txt. And there is our answer for hack the box. Now let's go back in and answer these hack the box questions. 
how many TCP ports are open? Uh, there were two being SSH and the HTTP page. What is the domain of the email address provided in the contacts section of the website? That was the toppers dot hack the box. In the absence of a DNS server, which Linux file can you use to resolve host names to IP addresses in order to be able to access the website that point to those host names? That was slash Etsy slash hosts. Which subdomain is discovered during further enumeration? Uh, if we remember, there was s3.thetoppers dot hack the box. Which service is running on the discovered subdomain? That was Amazon's S3. Which command line utility can be used to interact with the service running on the discovered subdomain? AWS CLI. Which command is used to set up this AWS CLI installation? That was AWS configure. What is the command used by the above utility to list all of the S3 buckets? That was AWS, specifically an S3 bucket, and just like Linux, it is LS. This server is configured to run files written in what web scripting language? That was PHP. And we need to submit our root flag. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna grab our flag and paste that in. And we have completed the three box. Congratulations on completing the three box. We're gonna start building upon these blocks and start building a house of hacking. You're doing excellent, see you in the next one.